Hi, uh, today we're going to continue working with arrays. You had an introduction to arrays on Monday and you uh, had labs uh, yesterday uh, to explore using arrays. And uh, my goal today is to uh, spend some more time with arrays, get some more experience, uh, review what you've learned and, and see some new applications. And uh, the goal today is to really uh, cement your understanding of arrays. Uh, please stop the video and ask if you have any uh, questions about any point at, at any time. Um, I would hope uh, this class can be as interactive as possible. And there's uh, uh, one of my teaching assistants is is there to take questions and help you review this material. So we're going to start uh, with a program that draws this star over on the left. Um, we'll get to how to draw it in a moment, but first of all, uh, what I'm showing in the program here is just the declaration of a bunch of variables with values. And these are the coordinates of the um, um, actually uh, 10 different points. Uh, there are the five points to the star, and there are the five uh, points in, in between the star points uh, that are the endpoints of these line segments. So we have a total of uh, 10 line segments and 10 coordinates uh, starting at uh, 5018 up here at the top. So let's scroll down a little bit and see how this uh, star gets drawn. Uh, you may not have seen this uh, before, but if you want to get beyond, um, I guess, four-sided uh, quadrilaterals uh, using uh, P5JS, there's a mechanism called shapes uh, that lets you make a um, as many sides as you want, straight-sided uh, objects. And you do that by writing begin shape, and that's a function call. And then for each point, uh, for each vertex, you call vertex with x and y coordinates. So here you see we're, we're calling vertex of x0, y0, and then for the next point, x1, y1, x2, y2, and so on, all the way down until we get all 10 points. And then we call end shape which um, finishes this. And by writing close, we uh, complete the line from the last vertex back to the first vertex, making a, a closed shape. Um, OK, well, great. So that's uh, one way to do this. But it's a little bit awkward having all of these variables. We have, we have 20 variables up here from x0 up to y9. And this is sort of screaming out for uh, using arrays instead. So we're going to look at another version of this program uh, where we've just rewritten everything using arrays named x and y. And so um, 50 is the old value of x0. 61 is the old value of x1. Um, but now they're just members of the x array. And similarly, we have a y array with y values. Uh, it's all simply written out here. Uh, what is this syntax with the square brackets? Well, that's, uh, that is, uh, means I want to construct an array. Um, I'm going to evaluate a sequence of expressions separated by commas inside uh, these brackets. Uh, so these become the elements of the array, and we close the array with a bracket, and we close the statement uh, with a semicolon. Okay, so in other words, you know we've we've written mathematical, you know, arithmetic expressions. We've written expressions with function calls. So now this is just a different type of expression that evaluates to an array. Um, now, before we wrote vertex x0, y0, now we have to write x uh, indexed by 0, y indexed by 0, 
uh, sometimes we call this x sub zero and y sub zero as if these are subscripts which of course typographically they're not subscripts but we call them subscripts anyway uh, it's kind of funny terminology um, okay and so we we we're using x sub zero through x sub nine and so on to to create these vertices uh, another thing I should point out about the syntax here is uh, the subscript notation looks a whole lot like this array expression up here. It's got square brackets. It's got an expression inside. So why is what is the difference? What is it that makes open bracket zero close bracket not actually an array expression? Um, maybe we could pause for a second and let somebody answer that. Okay, well, the answer is that this uh, array is preceded by um, a variable. So the, what, what JavaScript does is it, it evaluates the variable x and says, oh, x is this array uh, up here, and then Anytime you have an array expression followed by open bracket expression close bracket, that means um, index into the array and, and get pull out that value. Um, on the other hand, if we look up here, um, you know, let's go up to the top, there's no x in front of this, right? And so, whoops. And so when the um, when you see an open bracket all by itself, it's not, and you're expecting an expression, then that's an array expression. If if the bracket is comes after uh, an array, like like x down here, then the bracket is a subscript expression. Now the next thing we can do is think about loops. Whenever you work with arrays, it's very common uh, to iterate over the array using a loop, and this is going to be no exception. So um, if, we, if we look at these statements, you know, what's the difference between the first statement and the second statement? The only difference is the array changes from 0 to 1. And similarly, the next line, it goes from 1 to 2 and 2 to 3. So we've seen this, this form uh, before, we're really iterating over uh, index values. So let's write something like um, a loop that's going to generate i values uh, going from 0 through 9. So there's 10 values, as we know. And then um, what do we put inside the loop? Well, we, we want this vertex call, but instead of a, a specific index, we're going to use i as the index. So that way, uh, we're going to evaluate vertex with x sub 0, y sub 0. Then the next time through the loop, i will equal 1, and we'll get uh, x sub 1, y sub 1, and so on, all the way up to x sub 9, y sub 9. Okay, so I can just delete all this other stuff. And now, this is the entire program. So one thing that's nice is we have a something much smaller. And uh, maybe we should pause for a second to see if there are any questions about this. Okay, now that we have the program in this form, um, we can do some other other things might be of interest. Let's uh, um, let's introduce some new variables here uh, just for fun. Uh, Sorry, I don't really like those names. How about uh, we're, 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 I'm trying to uh, uh, 
capture the coordinates of the point. And uh, so I'm going to call it point X and point Y. And so now I can just draw the in the vertex at uh, point X and point Y. Uh, now the reason I did that is um, because this will I haven't really changed the program. Uh, but what I want to do now is what if I add some random values uh, to these points. So let's add minus 10 to plus 10 and draw this. Now um, I have I have the no loop down here which means draw is only going to be called once so I want to comment that out. So now we're going to repeatedly call draw and every time we draw the star um, we're drawing points at the original location, which was x sub i, but offset by some random value. So um, maybe somebody can explain what this is going to do, uh, what you think this might look like if we run it, and, and then we'll uh, continue the video and, and take a look. Okay, so um, here is uh, the program running. It's going kind of crazy. Uh, might be more interesting to slow down the frame rate. So let's let's do that to uh, oh, how about four frames per second? And uh, uh, there we go. Um, if we wanted to, we could we could make the the jitter much smaller. Uh, only by two. Uh, that's that's kind of interesting. Um, okay, so any any questions about this? Um, one more thing that we could do with this program is um, think about what would happen if we allowed these points to um, sort of migrate to drift. Like right now. Um, the star it more or less stays in place and it's only jittering uh, around, you know, plus or minus from the original x sub i and y sub i. But since we have x sub i and y sub i stored in the array, we could, we could actually change the values of the array. So one thing that we might do, just for example, suppose that we say x sub i plus equals 1. Oh, we'll just leave it at that. Um, someone tell me what that's going, going to do. Okay, well let's run it and see. Ah, so now we see the star kind of uh, dancing to the right and uh, I think we could do with a higher frame rate. Uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay. Um, another thing we could do is the following. Suppose instead of um, saving off these adjusted or you know maybe corrupted values of x and y, instead of saving those off into point x and point y and drawing them and then the next time through the loop we we don't remember x and y, we compute them all over again. So we're never changing x and y in the array. Uh, suppose we actually do that. We change x sub i. We alter x sub i to be x sub i plus some random number and we alter y sub i uh, to be some new value. And then we actually go back to just drawing at x sub i, y sub i. And maybe we'll slow the frame rate back down and let's, let's run this and try it. So now we see these points are changing, but every time the point changes, we store the change back into the array. So, for example, 
here's the modified x sub i, and we're assigning it to x sub i. And so you can see over in the drawing that over time, uh, the star is becoming very deformed and points have, have wandered in strange directions. Uh, sometimes this is called a drunken walk. Uh, you pick a random direction and you go that direction and then you uh, pick another random direction and you, and you go that direction and repeat this over and over again. And this, this so-called drunken walk has some, and sometimes also called Brownian motion, uh, has some interesting uh, statistical properties and uh, maybe some interesting animation properties as well. The next thing I'd like to look at is uh, this example I'm going to uh, illustrate running on the left here. Uh, this We start out with a blank canvas. There are no points and nothing is being drawn. Uh, when I click the mouse, like here, I get a point. If I click the mouse again, another point appears. So I'm uh, uh, dynamically uh, creating new points and keeping them on the canvas. Um, so there's there's are uh, easy ways to do this and, and less easy ways uh, to do this. So we're going to look at uh, one uh, kind of the easiest way using stuff that you've already learned. There's no arrays, nothing uh, fancy here at all. Um, and the trick is that we never erase the background. So if we look at how this program works, uh, we, we call setup, we create the canvas, we create the background here, and in draw, all we're doing is uh, calling ellipse to draw an ellipse at EX, EY. Well, what's EX, EY? Um, wow, it looks like EX, EY are uninitialized. Um, that seems like a bad idea. Just to be a little clear about what's happening, suppose we initially use minus 100, minus 100. So EX, EY are off the, the screen. All right, so even if we draw something successfully, it's not going to be visible. Uh, but whenever the mouse is pressed, we take mouse X, mouse Y, and we store them in EX, EY. So then draw will repeatedly draw an ellipse at that location where the mouse was pressed. Um, and <clears throat> nothing changes until you press at a new EX, EY. And so now draw is repeatedly drawing the second dot, and, and the first dot is just there because we haven't erased it yet. All right, so this is all great, except what if we wanted to change the color of the background? Well, we could change the color of the background, but that would erase all of these dots except for the, the most recent one. Uh, what we really want to do is uh, keep track of the locations of these of these dots. Uh, so let's try to do that. We're going to just modify this program. Um, and what we will do is uh, first of all, uh, we'll, instead of EX, EY being the, the last point that we clicked, um, we'll make them be arrays and they'll store every point that we clicked. So in the beginning, there are no points. So I'm going to use this notation. This is just saying, remember, uh, create an array. And each element is listed in the array, but there are no elements at all. So this is called an empty array. It's an array, but it has zero elements in it. Uh, great. And th then we want to draw everything in the array. So let's say for var i equals 0, i is less than uh, the length of the array ex, i plus plus. Um, and now, of course, we can't, uh, we don't want to draw the ellipse at EX because EX is an array. We, we want to draw EX sub I and EY sub I. And uh, we'll, we'll deal with mouse pressed in a minute. 
So since I've made a lot of changes, I'd kind of like to test this. So I think what I will do is let's just imagine uh, that we've got a couple of points in the array. And let's see if we can run this and draw a couple of points. Well, no. <laughs> so let's see if we can figure out what's wrong. Oh, um, I used the wrong notation uh, for length. I'm going to, oh yeah, that's right. OK, so length in JavaScript is not a function. It's a property <laughs> um, or a field. OK, so this is new notation that we need to uh, uh, take a look at. Um, we I don't know if we've encountered this before, but the dot, um, uh, you can kind of read that as apostrophe s. So if I were to type apostrophe s there, it would be ex's length. That's how to think about this, but we write it with a dot. OK, I'm going to leave it at that, and let's go over here and uh, to see. OK, so now I've got the two dots. Great, so now we're in business. I'm going to go back to the empty array because the next thing we want to do is figure out how do we add elements to this array. Uh, and here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to use the push method, which you've seen before. Um, uh, what this means is uh, when you write array dot push in some value, that means um, uh, extend the length of the array by one and set that new value at the end to be whatever is passed in as a parameter. So we're going to add the current value of mouse x mouse y. I shouldn't say add. We're going to append those values to the end of EXEY. And now if we run this, we can click. And isn't that great? But this looks just like the first program we had. So what, what's the big deal here? Well, now we can write uh, background. We can erase the background every time we call draw. And it still works. Well, but it doesn't look any different. Why would we want to do that? Well, we have this. Uh, uh, kind of cool example. I had a cool example. Oh, here's here's uh, here we go. I'm going to just copy copy some code in here. Just ignore all this <laughs> for the moment, um, and let's take a look at what we've got. Okay, so um, we are computing right here we are computing new variables r g and b and what in the heck is this uh, well first of all uh, to, to a first approximation r is 230 g is 230 b is 230 so that's a very light gray except what we're doing is we're adding uh, this expression where millis is the number of milliseconds uh, the program has been running. Uh, uh, it's 1,000 milliseconds per second. So millis divided by 1,000 gives us seconds. And so we're taking sine of seconds. And maybe we haven't discussed sine much. But um, this is a function that just kind of goes from minus 1 to plus 1 smoothly. So we're we're taking you know two 230 plus or minus something that's smoothly changing over time and same for green and blue and that's what the background is so if we run this and take a look oh we can see the background cycling through all these beautiful pastel colors and we can put points on top of that because we've stored the points in the array um, Another thing that we can do, since we have arrays, it might be useful, is we can do something that involves every point. So for example, if we wanted to draw a line from every point to mouse x, mouse y, let's do that. So um, 
we write, you might want to pause the video and have a discussion about what would what would I write here to draw a line from every point to mouse x, mouse y. And uh, we'll, we'll continue and just do that. So from every, how do we get every point? Well, we have to loop across all the points. So that loop is going to look like what we had before. I think declaring i to be a variable a second time here is a bad idea, at least on uh, some versions of JavaScript. So I'm going to take out that var. We don't need that. It's the same i. And uh, we're going to draw a line, right? So from the current point, which would be ex sub i to e and ey sub i. And we're going to run that, draw that to mouse x. Moist Y. <laughs> Save it and let's see if we can run this. Oh, look, there's the line. Uh, a line from every point to the mouse. Let's put a bunch of points in here. Uh, so that's kind of fun. Uh, so now we're, um, we've added points. Why is this going so, s so slow here? Well, we set the frame rate to five for some reason. If we, if we speed it up, we can get some more quality animation. Yeah, I'm not sure if the screen capture is going to catch all of this, but there we go. Um, okay, um, the next thing I want to look at is uh, the idea of computing centroid. But actually, um, to do that, we need to know we, we need to compute average because the centroid is just what what is the average position and so what we want to do is compute the average x value of all the points and the average y value of all the points and how do you compute um, average well um, the average of a set of numbers is the sum of the numbers divided by n, the number of, of numbers. So the first thing we have to do is sum up all of the numbers to compute average. So let's uh, make a new variable average x and we're going to start x at 0 and how, you know, it would be nice maybe if we could just say, okay, the sum of the sum of all values in uh, what ex, um, but we can't write that as code. We have to figure out how to do it. So how do you how do you make the sum? Well, we could start with zero, and then for each value, we could add that value to the sum, and it would just accumulate until we until we've added everything together. So we'll do that uh, once again. Yet another loop for i equals zero. Uh, for everything in the array, uh, increment i, and um, so what did we say? We're gonna we're gonna take uh, the sum that we have so far, average x, and oh, and let's let's take the sum and we're gonna add the x value of that point, and then we want to store that back into our running total. Oh, you know, and I call this average. Let's call it the sum and be a little more clear about what we're doing. So, um, the sum of all x's uh, at at the end of this for loop, we can say now uh, sum x is the sum of all values in e x, right? Uh, we want to sum up the y's too, so we might as well do that in the, we could do that in the same loop. We have a separate sum for y's, sum y equals sum y plus ey sub i, and uh, now I'm going to fix my comment. So that's sum x and sum y, but we were talking about the average, so let's 
how do we get the average from the sum? Well, it's just the sum of everything divided by the how many? How many were there? Well, there's ex length. Uh, and what about y? Same, same thing. The average value of y is the sum of all y's divided by the number of y's. It's also the same as the number of x's, but let's be a little consistent here. Um, okay, so now we have average x and average y, and just to be, to kind of illustrate where that is, let's draw a line here, and let's also draw a circle at uh, at the average x, average y, which again, this is known as the centroid. Draw a circle at the centroid, I cannot type, of all points. Um, average x, average y, um, make it 10 pixels. Okay, did I save that in the right place? Okay, so here's um, here's the centroid. Uh, every time I add a new point, it changes the average. <laughs> I can kind of pull the average anywhere I want to. Um, uh, so that's pretty interesting. Let's do uh, one more thing. Let's um, let's have these points drift around. Um, we're going to uh, let's see where would we have these things drift? Well, we draw them up here. So maybe just before we draw ex uh, a point at ex sub i, ey sub i, what if we uh, perturb the locations of those points like we did before? Um, maybe you know, plus or minus three every time. All right, so now we should get, we should get points that are um, wandering around. Yeah, here we go. We can slow this down a little bit. I'm going to put my frame rate back to where it was. Uh, so, so now we've got this structure that's kind of wandering around in space. It's got a centroid that we're recalculating, uh, tracking the movement um, of, of all of these random points. Okay, this would be a good point to ask questions, maybe review what we've done, um, and let's think about what to do next. Okay, well let's uh, wrap up and take a brief look at what we've done so far and try to summarize a bit. Uh, we've been talking about arrays. What's an array? An array is a um, uh, collection of values. Um, you can think of it as a um, kind of like a multiple variable. Uh, you know, a variable, normally a variable is sort of one box where we can store a value. Um, but an array is a collection of numbered boxes from zero through any number up to, to n. Um, it's a collection of boxes, and we can go up to the array and access a, a box by index, and we can store into a box by index. Um, that gives us the power to keep track of multiple objects. So anytime you see a problem where there, you're dealing with multiple things and they're all more or less alike, um, you know, if you're dealing with a house and a door and a window and a roof, Maybe that's not an array problem because all those things are different. They have different properties and positions. 
But if you're looking at um, a row of buttons or um, a sequence of, I don't know, a forest full of trees, they're all kind of the same uh, thing and there's just more than one of them, then you might want to think about uh, storing each one of those things or properties for each one of those things um, into an array. Um, once we have an array of objects, it's very common to treat them all the same. We want to do the same thing, like draw every one of them. And so that's uh, often going to lead to using a loop. And here's a perfect example of that. This is a for loop with the index going from zero, uh, not to some certain number, but to, in this case, ex.length. So that's kind of shorthand for saying, we're going to um, address or enumerate every object in the array and do something with it. And uh, then in the body of the loop, you really expect to see that same array. You know, if we're, if we, if we're running i from 0 to the length of ex, then in the loop, we're probably going to write ex sub i to grab each ith element of of ex or whatever the array is called and do something with it. We're, you know, we're going to draw it, we're going to update it, uh, we're going to do something. All right, so um, arrays. And then uh, we also, besides accessing the array with subscript notation and assigning to the array or like, like this, again with subscript notation, we also um, saw this operation push, which means stick something on the end, stick a new element on the end of the array. And there are some more functions that you should know about. And we're not going to go through these in any detail right now, but uh, you, can, you can look these up and study them. Uh, we, here's push, adds a new element to an array at the end. There's a function called pop, which you may have worked with already. It deletes the last element, and uh, it actually return. It not only modifies the array. So you write, you know, array dot pop. Um, that's not only going to modify the array, but that's an expression that uh, returns the value of the last element in the array. Uh, the third thing is shift, which deletes the first element and shifts everything down. So everything that was in, you know, if you were at index three, then after the shift, you're going to be sitting at index two. Um, you can reverse that operation by inserting something at the beginning of the array and shifting everything down. Uh, that's called unshift. So unshift is, is kind of just like push, except whereas push inserts an element at the end of the array, unshift inserts an element at the beginning of the array. And then we have reverse uh, that reverses the order of the elements in the array. And all of these are uh, called methods and you write them by saying, you know, the variable that's holding the array like ex dot push or ex dot pop or ex dot reverse. That's the syntax. And there's lots more. So you can check out uh, these links, what we're looking at here are notes on the course website. So you can go find these links on your own and do some, some reading. And that's all I have for you today. I hope this was useful and I'll see you guys at the next class.